Hello all and welcome back to Wendy's Way. Today we are following our journey in food. I'm going to throw together a quick recipe that I've never made before. Simply because that's how I roll. I was looking through a dump meals recipe book uh, offered from Rada Manufacturing, Rada Cutlery and Utensils that I am a seller of. And they had a wonderful looking chicken pot pie recipe. I don't have everything in my pantry that they called for chicken pot pie, but I have canned chicken meat that I have made, not the kind that you pull out of an aluminum can. I have beans that I canned from my garden rather than peas from a freezer bag. And I have potatoes, I have cream of chicken soup, and I just happen to have a store-bought pie crust. Only one because I pulled one out the other day and I wrapped it around some big old hot dogs and, and cheese and made some pigs in a blanket. So I thought I'd bring you along on this impromptu chicken pot pie. So far, I have gathered my tools and my food. I have preheated my oven to 375, and I'm going to do like I always do and just play with the camera and point it down at the countertop. Mm-hmm. Let's try that a little better, shall we? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to be baking in this 9-inch, technically, it's a cake pan. It's got a non-stick surface on it, but I'm going to spray it with cooking spray nonetheless. Makes it easier for Bubba, a.k.a. the dishwasher, <laughs> to take care of things. I have a mixing bowl I'm going to put it all together in. I have the beans that I canned from the garden. Um, you can see there's probably a couple of different colors in here. It was purple potted pole beans up to here and then I topped it off with some yellow butter wax to make sure the jar was full. The most disappointing thing is that purple potted pole beans when you cook them they turn green. Anyway they taste really good. So we're going to put those in. I'm going to mix it all up and then I'm going to dump it in the pan and put the crust on top. Oop, got a little extra in there. Don't want to lose out on any of those beans. They're good. There we go. This is a quart of potatoes. I think they were russets. And I've put up videos before on my playlist of food on how I pressure can Potatoes, excuse me, 100% of the time we have cooked potatoes available for any recipe or simply for frying, for casseroles, for any little thing. And so we're going to have potatoes in our chicken pot pie. I have it called for a couple small cans of cream of chicken soup, but I happen to have one large one. So we're going to put that in there. And even though the Rada that I love and sell have large cooking spoons. I'm addicted to wood for some reason. Next time I will show you. I'll put a link down below. Um, the large spoons that they made last year have been replaced by a different style, but I've been told you can order them until they run out. So I'll put a link to the old ones because they were a little more heavy duty than the new ones are. All right, and we just canned chicken again, 
and I'm going to put this in with the liquid because I raw pack every single thing that I can. I don't pre-cook or blanch any of it. And the chicken I put in raw, I add absolutely no water. All I put in is cubed raw chicken and a half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt in these pint jars. So all that liquid is chicken juice. And if you want, you know, because it cooks and it somewhat, you know, it, it clumps together cubed chicken when it cooks. If you want it chunky, you can dump it out like this and just fork it apart a little bit. I like mine more shredded in recipes like this, especially this chicken pot pie. So I am using a rated tool. <laughs> this is the carving fork and it is outstanding. Honestly, I do use it for carving large pieces of meat, but I use it more often for shredding canned meat in the jar. To me, that's what this fork is made for in my house. So you just put it down in the meat and turn. And you go from having a pint of kind of solid chunked cooked chicken to having juicy shredded chicken. I mean, you do this a long time you really get it shredded. Um, if I had drained it, then I could combine it with, you know, Miracle Whip and relish and musk, whatever you like to put in chicken salad for sandwiches and stuff. So there, we did that. Now we're gonna put the chicken in the mixing bowl. And as you can see, it's all biddied up now into small pieces. I might have wanted a bigger bowl. What do you think? If Lisa Henning watches my videos, she's a, uh, she sells Pampered Chef products. So if she wanted to comment on this video, she could probably give you the item number of this beautiful glass mixing bowl. <laughs> I have had it for ever. Uh, there are two things that Pampered Chef makes that I've never been happy with anyone else's offering. Uh, that is these glass mixing bowls with measuring marks on the outside and the, um, the old-fashioned kitchen shears. They don't make the old-fashioned ones anymore. I'm glad I still have mine because it's probably 20 years old. I have cut everything from chicken bones to carpet with that stinker. Sterilize it and start over. And you sharpen it by using it. Uh, so, all right. Here we have, like I say, we have green beans, potatoes, chicken, and soup. And you know, since everything is already pre-cooked except for the crust, I'm not going to bother putting in any you know, bell peppers or anything that's not cooked yet. Um, we're just going to go with what we've got. And since I put salt in the jars with the beans, with the chicken, and with the potatoes, I'm not going to add any seasonings uh, to the ingredients for the chicken pot pie. I think that... Ha uh, <laughs> ha I should have split it into two dishes, but I only have one crust, so. <laughs> well, we'll put a sheet cake pan underneath it. Just in case it decides to leak because it is so desperately full. I don't know. I probably should have... Uh, filled two pans <laughs> and made some extra crust. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to take part of this out of here because I'm just going to have a mess if I don't. So I won't make you watch me do that. I'll be right back. Okay. 
<laughs> we are back. That was absolutely going to make a horrendous mess if I left it heaped up in this pan. So now I will um, put away the other half of the filling for the chicken pot pie. And tomorrow when I bake bread, you know, maybe we'll make some rolls or biscuits and we'll have it for lunch like biscuits and gravy. Ooh, that'll be good. Okay, now is the lazy part. <laughs> this pie shell has been laying out. It's a store-bought pie shell. It's been laying on the counter for hours, you know, because you really want them at about room temperature. Otherwise, they stay very stiff and they're not terribly um, pliable, shall we say. Okay. I think the easiest way, I've always thought, to do this is to fold it in half. Set it on there. And flip out the other side. Now I'm going to center it as best I can. I am going to mm -hmm. over, under, what do you think? Under. Okay, I'm going to turn it in and pinch it. Crimp it, as I think my grandma would probably say. You crimp that crust between your fingers and your thumb. Even probably closer than I'm doing it. I may go around another time. Wow, well, I didn't have that very well centered. But that's all right. <laughs> Nothing in life is perfect except my good Lord and Savior. <laughs> Everything I do is subject to inspection by him and quite often comedic to those who know me best. Isn't that right? I like making people laugh and smile. I laugh more than anybody I know. Life's too fun not to enjoy it and laugh about it. You know, today I shared my opinion on a very touchy subject. Uh, hot button issue. I shared my opinion with a neighbor and friend and she and I um, are pretty much of opposing views on this subject. But, you know, we respect one another and we listen to one another. And, you know, she told me that she appreciated my friendship and she would give my thoughts consideration. And I said the same to her. She made points that I had not even thought of. So, you know, folks, life is too short to stress over things. Life is too short not to be kind and loving. And, you know, from my perspective, I'm sharing the love of God. Um, you know, from someone else's perspective who doesn't want to hear it, I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab a sharp knife. If they don't want to hear it, you know, I'm just being a good neighbor. Because... Being neighborly is just the way you're supposed to be. Okay. I poked it. I'm thinking maybe a little more with my tomato slicer because if there's a knife that's going to go through a pie crust and not stick, ah, it will be the tomato slicer. That little stinker is the sharpest knife in the Rita arsenal. I don't use it often. 
partly because it is the most wickedly sharp knife they make. And the handle is small. You know, it fits the size of the blade and the knife, but my hands are anything but small. So because it is so sharp and the handle is so small, I don't use it much. I'm, a, I'm afraid of cutting myself, seriously. I am. And uh, there. Okay. I think I've pretty much I've crimped it. I think I've kind of sealed the edges there. I've poked in the top. I don't think I'm going to egg wash it. You know, because it's a chicken pot pie, not a fruit and berry pie. All right. I'm going to throw this in a 375 oven. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and look at it. And if it's not golden brown by then, I'll give it another five. And I'll be back later to show you how it turned out. All righty. This is what our girl looks like fresh from the oven. I had put it in for 30 minutes at 375. As you can see by the edges, even with it level with the edges of the pan, it was bubbling over. So I should have put a pan underneath it, but no, we have a dirty oven. I did pull it out at 30 minutes, spray the top a little bit with uh, butter flavor cooking spray because it was still pretty pale. Gave it another seven minutes and now we have a better light golden brown on the top. I also brushed it with just a little bit of Kerrygold grass-fed butter after I brought it out and sprinkled just a tiny bit of pink Himalayan salt. So, I'm gonna let it cool a few more minutes and we're gonna dig into this bad boy and I'll let you know what it looks like when we're there. It hasn't been long, but we're hungry. So I broke out one of these uh, Rada spoons, one of the good old solid ones that they aren't making anymore, but they're still offering it if you want to order it through the website. I'll put a link down below and uh, see if I can look at it and dig into it at the same time. <laughs> gonna be soupy and that is okay <laughs> it's hot too wow mm. no pretty peas and carrots but it looks pretty tasty anyway Okay, this is an impromptu, no specific recipe, chicken pot pie. Thank you for joining me at Wendy's Way. May the good Lord who blesses me each and every day of my life bless you as well, today and always. Amen. <laughs>